We have this 2020 GMC Denali came in with the 3.0 liter Duramax inline six turbo diesel. And customer concern was a check engine light. Check engine light code was the P0016. From what I can find for this engine is mostly mechanical. Uh, I think even on the intelligent diagnostics, it says replace timing chain or engine, but timing chain may have stretched, which is causing the P0016 code. And from what I'm seeing, it, the timing chain seems to be the point of failure. And the only way to really test it is to actually tear down the whole engine because the timing's on the back side uh, where it meets up with the transmission. But I want to go ahead and do an oscilloscope test on the crank sensor and the cam sensor to see what the ECM is seeing. And so I couldn't find a good waveform or a good uh, oscilloscope test to see what it's supposed to look like. But I'm going to go ahead and perform it and show it to you. And then once I go ahead and get the okay from the warranty to do the repair for the timing chain, I'll go ahead and perform another oscilloscope test and see what changed. So you have maybe a known bad and a known, a known good waveform without, you know, tearing down the whole engine for the P0016 code. So I went ahead and got my leads all set up on the back of the ECM. Uh, I pulled up a wire diagram to see where the crank sensor and camshaft sensor signal wire is going to the ECM connector. So let's go ahead and start it. We only need it to be running for, you know, a couple of seconds, really, because it's rotating so fast. Looks like we got some readings, good readings. So let this idle for another like three seconds and we'll stop it. So we got the vehicle uh, turned off and we got our readings for our crank, crank sensor and our camshaft sensor. Uh, let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit. So our yellow line should be our camshaft and our green line should be our crankshaft as we wait for 32 now nah, it looks a lot better okay so our yellow is our camshaft and we can tell that by the way these waveforms are so we got a small small tooth there another small tooth a big tooth and a second big tooth on the camshaft and that kind of correlates with how the reluctor ring looks on the camshaft and then our green line is going to be our crankshaft um, which the sensor is reading and you can see that these lines are a lot more uh, consistent and we could tell that this black line this black line this black line all this black line to this black line is one crankshaft rotation and this small tooth to this other small tooth is one camshaft revolution so we got two crankshaft revolutions per camshaft revolution so that kind of correlates with where these black lines are lining up so we go to our beginning of our tooth on our camshaft so there was two big teeth that's a small tooth and another small tooth and we got this big gap right here which is the start of our new crankshaft revolution. Uh, let's go ahead and move this line. So we move our second line right here at the beginning of our camshaft tooth revolution. And we move this line to our beginning of our crankshaft revolution. This is about the gap that we should have on all other readings of our camshaft and crankshaft. So we got about one, two, three um, teeth reading before our camshaft revolution. So let's go ahead and go to another camshaft revolution. And this should line up exactly. It should, there shouldn't be too much deviation from our crank 
reading from our camshaft reading as it rotates. So we can see that our crankshaft timing tooth has actually became more retarded in reading because it's reading later than our camshaft tooth is. As, as our previous revolution, we go back, these were lining up perfectly on our first tooth of our crankshaft and our tooth on our camshaft. And you see this is reading more retarded later time than before. So let's go to another revolution. Mm, yeah, you can see this one is way off. Uh, this is a small tooth, right? Yeah, small tooth, and then it should be another small tooth. Yeah. So you can show I'm on the right, being consistent with my readings. And you can see if we line up our second line with our camshaft tooth, you can see this tooth is way advanced than before. Our other one was more retarded. This one's more advanced. Um, and it should be lining up with our number one line. Now this is the hard part. We don't actually have a good, or I can't, at least I can't find a good waveform for the timing of the 3.0 liter turbo Duramax inline six. I tried to look around and I couldn't find one. The pinpoint test for this code P0016 just tells you to, you know, tear the engine down, check timing components, but that's a very invasive um, test to see if the timing's off or not. You know, there's not really another way um, to check other besides this. And this is probably the best way to check if your timing is off without tearing into the whole engine and seeing if your tensioners are fully extended or comparing your old chain to a new chain. At least this is a baseline. So we got it all torn down officially after this hot mess of wiring harnesses and brackets. And uh, let me go on the other side actually. So I got my crankshaft locked up already with this locking pin. Um, so my crankshaft is timed. And then of course I had to remove all these hoses and turbo, stuff like that. And then I was able to get access to the rear side of the engine to check timing. So I know my t crank is locked up. And now when I put in the timing tools for the cam, uh, this is supposed to be perpendicular with the cylinder head. And obviously it's uh, at an angle here. It's more, uh, so the cam's a little bit more retarded uh, than the crank. And then as well as uh, this timing tool, which lines up at the back of the gears and it's supposed to go in this little slot right here on the exhaust side so it's definitely out of time a lot of work to see if this engine's out of time so good thing i performed an oscilloscope test um you know i back probe the back of my ecm right here i got my little my dongles here. I'm going to keep them in there because after I do the whole timing of uh, this engine, uh, I'm going to try to decipher the waveform on my computer. And then I'm also going to do an oscilloscope again after the repair to see the good known waveform and a bad waveform. So if this ever happens again, if I get a vehicle with a P0016, especially on this vehicle, Instead of tearing it, it down, you know, this far to check the timings out, I can just pull up my waveform and perform an oscilloscope test. A lot easier, a lot less invasive, and then I also die it a lot faster. So, yeah, let me go ahead and time this engine. I'm going to go ahead and count the teeth and see how this engine is timed. And, uh, yeah, I'll keep you updated. 
So this is our primary chain right here. This is what connects our crankshaft and our fuel injection pump. And taking a look, comparing the new chain with the old chain, it looks pretty good. It doesn't look stretched. But if we take a look at our secondary chain, this is what runs on the fuel injection pump to the camshafts. And it starts getting misaligned right here. And we just look at the end. You can see that our you can see that our old chain is a little longer than our new chain. This is probably why we're throwing that P0016 code. Crankshaft camshaft correlation code. Timing this engine was a trip. I spent like two and a half hours contemplating where this timing mark was. You see there's a timing mark right there that's supposed to show and then a timing mark that's supposed to show right there. And there's a gear behind this oil pump gear that the chain goes on. The shop manual says there's a timing gear and I couldn't find it. I put my mirror underneath and I bore a scope the gear to try to find some type of timing mark and I couldn't. I got these two lined up and hopefully uh, that is good enough. I kind of did a process of elimination by moving one link forward and one link backwards and this indeed is where these both timing marks line up. So I'm assuming it is timed and I guess we'll find out if it's timed correctly or not when we started. Which I was hoping to confirm this third timing mark but um, I think it is not on there. I don't know. But it looks a lot better. Our, t our, our timing gear is in place where it's supposed to be. Um, our tensioner looks way better. It's not fully extended. So as well as this tensioner, our timing marks are lining up. It's looking good. We got our oil belt replaced and installed. We got our sensors back in. And so now the engine is timed. We can see that our, let me get you closer. So now that we got this engine timed, you can see this reluctor wheel is perfectly in the middle of this camshaft sensor, which we're gonna use to determine if our engine was out of time or not. So if we go down here on our crankshaft, we can see we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Seven and eight is kind of straddling this crankshaft sensor. So eight and seven is where it's supposed to meet up at top on the camshaft. So there'd be there's supposed to be two teeth on that line up there. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight teeth, and we should be in time. So let's go ahead and look at my oscilloscope test. Okay, so I got my oscilloscope picture set up on my screen right here right uh so you can see that at the beginning of the video i went off of these two because i thought this is where the beginning of the, the camshaft sensor and the crank sensor was this is indeed not the beginning of the cam sensor it is the end of this one i you should say right so it doesn't even matter because my yellow line would be farther forward than my green line. So we take a looker, I mean a closer look, All right? So this is where that cam sensor was reading on this line. And there's supposed to be, remember there was supposed to be seven and eight green teeth or crank teeth straddling this line right here. So we count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and nine ten and eleven so ten and eleven is how many teeth is starting this line right now we have one two three four five six seven and eight this is where the engine is timed currently right now so my yellow line is supposed to be technically right there so interesting so i'll get this all back together and i mean this is probably going to take me a while but and then i'll plug my scanner back into my my leads right here and then i'll check if i have a good waveform if their seven and eight is straddling that cam sensor so yeah let's put it back together the fun part
So the truck is all done. I didn't get a chance to record the startup nor my oscilloscope test, but I went ahead and took a picture of the test so I could show you the good waveform and the bad waveform and kind of walk you through of uh, my decipher of what uh, I saw and my point of failure and also confirming my fix. So at the beginning of the video, I didn't know what was a good waveform. I didn't know how the engine was timed at all. So I went off this first small tooth because I know not a one camshaft revolution per two crankshaft revolutions, right? Which wasn't bad. So if you look at this first tooth, we got one, two, three teeth mark on the crankshaft reading before that first tooth on the camshaft. Um, and these are pretty consistent with all the other readings that I got but of course that is not the way the engine is timed the way the engine is timed is basically is going to be off of this um, this part right here the first big tooth and so this would be my top dead center line right here and this is where be my top dead center for my crankshaft and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine teeth right on top dead center of this camshaft reading. And this is on the same thing on this side and on this reading as well. We have nine teeth. So the right here is the good waveform. Good waveform, you have nine teeth on the crankshaft and then this is the camshaft. The nine tooth should be lining up at the very end of this first big tooth on the camshaft. Now we take a look at our, um, this is just the pictures uh, showing the timing tools not actually lining up and the chain stretched. And this was my first oscilloscope test. So we went here. My first oscilloscope test, I went off this first tooth, one, two, three, four, again off by a tooth, and then we have one, two, three, four. Um, can't really tell if there's a tooth right there. But even if we go to the top dead center of the crankshaft and camshaft, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10 or 11, either one. He's kind of straddling this, that mark right there for top dead center. Then we go over here. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. Same thing. Um, it's supposed to be, this yellow mark is supposed to be on this ninth tooth on the screenshot. So it was indeed out of time. So this is my good waveform. My fix was confirmed, and now um, if this concern ever happens again on another truck, this test would be a lot easier to perform, and I could determine a lot faster if the P0016 is actually occurring due to timing change stretch. So I appreciate you watching. I hope this was helpful, and I will see you next time.